Hey all it's Andrew Couch here. In this Tiger Tuesday video, we're not going to be looking at this week's data set. Um, I'm going to continue working on some tidy model stuff. And in this case, we're actually going to go on to this new data set called the Palmer Penguins. And the main idea is to basically use this toy data set as an alternative to the famous Iris data set. So I thought it'd be interesting to basically make um, some models for using the tidy models framework and kind of go through all of the main packages of the tidy models and kind of just explain the main functions for each package. Additionally, I think it'd be kind of cool to actually deploy a tidy model into a shiny app. So that's what we're going to do this week. So we're just going to use the Palmer penguins and the tidy models package. Okay. So we're going to load up a uh, markdown file, our markdown, and it'll say tidy Tuesday deploying. We'll say a uh, tidy Tuesday penguin model cool oh, we're gonna pop that up do get this stuff so we're gonna use the tidyverse the tidy models package and also the palmer penguins package um and you can install the palmer penguins package by just using the remotes install um, function, install GitHub function, because it's a private, not not private, a uh, public repository. Okay, so we have that, and the Palmer Penguins package just comes with two data sets, which is penguins. Cool. So let's just do a a basic EDA. We're gonna look at the penguins. Um, one thing that I think would be interesting is just to predict species um, using, you know, the island origin, build length, build depth, you know, basic, um, basic um, descriptions of the actual penguin. So let's first count the species. And we can see that, first of all, there's three different classes and the classes are a little bit imbalanced where actually we don't have a lot of chin strap um, species. So we kind of have to take into account um, if we want to do any type of sample procedures to um, rebalance the class, the classes that we're trying to predict. Okay, so um, species has some imbalances. Cool. Additionally, if we look at right here, we can see that there's actually some um, NAs. So if we do a penguins uh, summary, we can see that there's a decent amount of NAs. You know, there's like two, 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 11. So we're missing a decent amount of, uh, compared to all the columns, we're actually missing a decent amount of um, uh, values from the sex column. Additionally, what I wanna do is, I wanna look at um, row-wise uh, missing numbers, missing values. So if a row is missing, say, th like the majority of its values, and we may wanna remove it. So. I'm going to do this penguins, uh, mutate row num equals row number. And I'll do a gather key equals key value equals value minus, minus row num. Right. And then I'll do a filter or value is dot NA. And then lastly, I'll just do a count of the row num sort equals true okay so what do we have here we actually have um two rows that are missing five um values and if we look at it we have one two three four five six seven values so that is a lot of values that it's missing and i think that we should actually remove that okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a uh, slice one to two and then select row num so these are the row numbers we want to remove. So I'm going to say rows to remove. Okay. And now I'm going to remove the rows. So I'm going to do this first. So say check um, how many NAs for each row. And then I'll say remove rows that have too many NAs. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do a, uh, uh, do that. And then I'll do a anti-join with rows to remove 
i equals row num. And now we are we aren't missing those. Uh, now we removed um, any rows that were missing more than five. Uh, oops, uh, five uh, five uh, NAs, right? Because we had four and twenty four, and now you can see we're we don't have the four and twenty four anymore. Okay, so then I'll say deselect the minus row num, and then I'll apply it to the penguins again. Okay, so we did some basic data cleaning, um, and now let's actually look at um, the NAs for each each column. Okay, so we'll do that again. Say um, check column NAs, and we can see that uh, we actually are we actually removed most of our NAs, and now it's only just um, sex. So one thing that we kind of have to think about is, okay, so if we have sex as our only missing values, um, let's, let's figure out how we should impute it. Because it's actually, um, the class imbalance, class balance for sex is pretty, uh, pretty even. So let's see if we can find anything that's predictable. Um, one thing that I was thinking about is we can't really use mode for these categorical variables. However, one thing that we could do is maybe a k-nearest neighbor. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a select, we're gonna do maybe like a, a pivot longer, and then we'll say, eh, we'll just do a gather key equals key value equals value minus sex. And then I'll just say select minus species and minus island. Okay. And then I'll do a ggplot as um, x equals sex, y equals value plus geom box plot plus facet wrap by key scales equals three. And then we'll do a, uh, how about we do a color equals sex, color equals sex. So what do we see here is we actually see that the, uh, the flip, these numerical features actually show a difference between genders. Um, just some basic implications is that men or male penguins are generally larger, which that makes sense. Um, we can also figure out maybe like species and island. So instead of doing, uh, we can, instead of doing, yeah, instead of doing minus species, we can say uh, minus species and minus island. And then we can say, you know, let's do X equals species. So we can see um, the kind of cross tabs between species and sex, how, you know, some species will be larger with bill depth. Some will have a longer bill length, etc. But we can see the basic pattern that males um, are generally larger in sizes or in, in these um, features than females. Okay, so we can say this. A male and female have different um, sizes and features can probably impute missing with uh, canon. Okay, cool. So now let's just do, um, let's look at the distributions. Just say examine distributions. And that's something where uh, we'll take the penguins. Uh, we'll say select, I don't know, bill length to body mass. And then we'll just do a, a pivot longer. Oh, actually we'll just do a get, we'll just do a gather and then gather. And then we can just do a uh, ggplot x equals value, color equals key plus genome density plus facet wrap key scales equals free. Okay. And we see these distributions. Um, they are a little bit, they're not normal distributions there. You can see there's like bimodal sums are skewed, right? So we might have to do some, um, scaling, certain scaling, stuff like that. Okay. So examine distributions probably need to center and scale, but nothing looks too crazy where we would, I, I wouldn't really want to go, um, too crazy with like estimating other distributions and stuff like that. Okay. 
So when we go back to the tidy models package, the first package that's the most important and you'll use in the tidy models framework is the R sample package. So we're going to show the R sample package. So R sample package example. So this main package is basically for, uh, like sampling procedures. Um, and the main thing that you'll kind of do with it is the split function. So first we'll, we'll split our data. So tidy split initial split penguins and prop equals 0.8. So we'll do an 80, 20 split. And then our sample also comes with a training function that uses the split and a testing function. And this will create our train and test sets. So we'll say tidy train training, tidy split, and then tidy test, testing, tidy split. So it says, so first we're going to say, create the train and test sets using our sample. Additionally, um, we can also specify, um, cr uh, how we can do our tuning procedures so we can do, um, K folds. So we can do tidy K folds which is vfold cv. And in this case, we're going to give it our training data set. We can also do some, instead of using um, k folds, we can also use, say, the leave one out method, leave one out cross validation. We can also do, uh, um, was it bootstrap? Yeah, we can do bootstrapped. So there's different type of, um, of sampling procedures you can do when you're tuning your model. But in this case, I'm just going to use the, uh, uh, K folds cross validation. Okay, cool. Actually, I'll do a, uh, I'll do a, what set dot seed 42. Okay. So we got that. Okay. So the next package that we're really going to be looking at, and this is kind of the, the package that, uh, really has a lot of the, the main meat and potatoes in it is the recipes package. And this is for basic pre-processing. So this, I'm going to just show you how to, the main functions of the recipe package, the recipes package, and this for pre-processing your data, um, feature engineering and even feature limit elimination. Um, if you see my past videos, we actually have done a decent amount of feature engineering specifically with like, uh, interaction effects. However, in this case, what we're going to do is mostly with, uh, the pre-processing function. So we're going to call the main, uh, uh, command which is the recipe. We specify the, the formula. In this case, we're going to be predicting species with all of our data. And then we give it our data. In this case, we're going to give it our, our tidy train data. First, we're going to do some imputations. In this case, we can do step, uh, K and N imputate because we see that, um, the gender can definitely be imputed, um, using the other features. Okay. So we'll say. Uh, we want to impute the the sex column and then what we want to do is we're going to create our dummy variables and we'll say all nominal however all nominal will also include the species so we want to also uh we want to uh, remove that so we'll say but we don't want to include any of the outcomes okay and then what we can do is we can just say we'll just impute anything that uh in case that there's any missing values and also uh, normalize all of our values, all of our uh, predictors. So dummying is basically for the pre-processing median impute is just in case we have any missing numbers in the future. And then we also do as a normalization for more, uh, kind of more pre-processing. We didn't really do too many feature engine. We didn't really do any feature engineering. However, the, this normalization could be kind of considered as some type of feature engineering. Okay. So we do that. Um, we can also do called a prep function to basically see what it's doing. So we could say, okay, it's doing K nearest neighbor imputation for these values. It's creating dummy variables for island and sex. And then it's imputing all of that, imputing for any of the nominal values. And then it does finally center and scaling. Makes sense. That's what we want it to do. Okay. So we'll call this the tidy recipe. Um, I, I've made a ton of videos on the recipes package. So you can go and kind of go through my channel and see the more complex uh, recipes um, usage. Okay. So now we're going to actually go to the, the models part of the tidy models package. So we're going to use a uh, parsnip 
which is basically the main um, standardized API for creating um, machine learning models. Okay, so we're going to say um, parsnip package. And this is basically the standard standardized API for creating models. In this case, what we're going to do is if we look at the tidy models, um, let's see here, go to reference. And it basically comes with different models. And what's cool is you can specify the, the type of model. So you say, I want a boosted model. And you can also specify the engine. So you say, I want a boosted model that uses an XGBoost backend, or I want to use a boosted model that uses Spark as the backend. In this case, we're actually going to use a boosted model. So I'll say tidy boosted model, boost tree. And if we go back to it, we can see that there's actually um, a decent amount of parameters that they give you. In this case, I just want it to tune the trees. So it's trees equals tune, min n or min samples is tune and the learn rate, which will be tuned. Also, I want to set the mode for classification and I'll set the engine as a XG boost. Okay. Also create a, uh, a K nearest neighbor model. So, um, you just call it nearest neighbor. The only parameters is neighbors, which will tune that set them. Oops. Set the mode to classification and the set the engine to KNN, KKNN. Okay. Cool. So the parsnet package is actually not really a complicated package, but then the thing that I think confuses people the most is actually the tune and the dials package. So the tune and the dials package kind of go hand in hand. Um, the, the dials package, which is this basically kind of does the standardization for all the tuning parameters and allows you to create basically the grids. So, um, given these mo models, they all have different parameters. So the boosted model has trees, min, n learn rate, whereas the K nearest neighbor model only has neighbors, the tune, the dials package really creates like a grid for you to test these parameters for the model. Whereas the, um, the, I mean, the dials creates the grid of the parameters. Whereas the tune actually kind of tunes the dial and actually applies these parameters to the models to get the best results. So we're going to use this. So we will say, um, dials creates the parameter grids tune applies the parameter grid to the models. So in this case, we're going to use the dials first dials package. So what we can do is if we actually look up the um, parameters so we can say parameters from the tune package and th and then we can grab the tidy boosted models parameters see it, it so when you say parameters it'll say okay here are the parameters that we want to do but we can also use the grid regular from the dials package so parameters comes from the tune package and grid regular comes from the dials package and we can put the parameters that we want to put in the grid and we, we can grab the parameters from the model and then give it to the grid. And then we can specify how many, um, parameters we want to tune or what, what variations we want to make. So in this case, I, I said 10, I'm actually going to switch it to five. So we have 125 different sets of parameters that we're going to test for our, uh, uh, our boosted model. So I'll say boosted grid, and then we'll do a KNN grid. Uh, grid regular parameters, uh, tidy cannon model. And we'll say, uh, levels equals 10. Okay. So that's the dials package. And then the tune package just applies it. In this case, we're actually going to call the tune grid and we're going to give it a model. So tidy boosted model, our recipe, tidy recipe, our resamples which is our tidy K folds. And lastly, our grid, which will be our boosted grid. Okay. And we'll say, we'll call this boosted tune. And then we're also going to do it to our K and N uh, model. So tune grid, our, uh, tidy K and N model, our tidy recipe, our resamples, 
which is our tidy k folds and then our grid which is our k and n grid and what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply i'm going to basically train all these models using cross k folds cross validation to figure out which of these parameters which pair of parameters in these grids give me the best results okay so i'm going to run that i'm going to pause the video and i'll uh, resume it when it finishes training okay so our models finished training um now we're going to use the tune package to actually um uh select our best metrics so we what we can do is we can um we can do the uh um select we can grab our tuning so boosted tune and then select best and in this case we can do say like accuracy or we can also use roc auc um let's see here. are these actually the same yep so in this case i'm going to do roc auc um they actually use um, since this is a multi-class classification problem, they actually use a different variation of ROC, AOC. In this case, they use the hand till variation, but that's not really a big deal. So we'll call this the boosted parameters or boosted param. Okay. And then we can also do that with our KNN tune. So KNN param, KNN tune, select best ROC, AOC. Okay, so this is say use tune package to extract best um, parameters uh, using ROC AUC hand till. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is apply our parameters to the models. So what we'll do is we'll say uh, we we'll, we'll use the finalize model, give it the tidy boosted model and our boosted uh, param and I'll basically give those parameters into the model okay and then we'll do the same thing with the KNN model finalize model uh, tidy KNN model and then KNN param okay so now that we have um, all these finalized models now we're going to go to the workflow package and the workflow package basically kind of centers around combining everything together okay so it basically applies the pre-processing the modeling all into one little object okay so what we're going to do is we're going to create a workflow so this is going to be our boosted workflow uh workflow add a model which will be our tidy boosted model and then add our recipe which would be our tidy rec. Okay, so for combining model parameters and pre-processing. Okay, and then we'll say uh, KNN workflow, workflow, add model, tidy KNN model, add recipe, tidy rec. Okay. So now that we have our trained models using all of our training data, which also found the best parameters, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna uh, put it to the test set. So we're actually gonna use the last package, which is the tune package. And the tune package is say, for extracting uh, metrics from, from the model. So this basically measures um, how your model is doing with your data. So we're going to do that. We're going to call this the boosted, boosted, uh, was it results? And we'll say last fit boosted workflow and then our tidy split. And then we'll also do the, Ooh, um, uh, boosted workflow address tidy, tidy split. Let's see what's going on here. No, 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 oops, just that. Sorry about that. I don't know why it was running into errors, but so I just did the last fit and we'll also do that for the KN and res. I also uh, changed the things where I, I was actually spelling the boosted model wrong, but I fixed that. So you guys shouldn't have any problems if you're following along. So I'm going to do the last fit, give it the KN and workflow and then the tidy split. Okay. Now we're going to use, um, 
now we're going to use the uh the the was it the tune package and basically uh put them together so we'll say uh bind rows um we'll say boosted res mutate model equals xgb uh and then we'll give it also the knn res mutate model equals knn and then we'll say uh unnest dot uh metrics and we can see our what is it where is it our metrics for our models but what we should actually use is oops not we're not going to use the tune package we're going to use the a uh, yardstick package sorry about that we're going to use the yardstick package to basically estimate um our best models um okay so our estimate is very good for these models. However, we can use the yardstick to find the confusion matrix. So we'll look at our boosted res. We'll say we'll um, unnest our dot predictions, right? And then we can do a confusion matrix. So our truth will be equal to our, if we go back here, our species and our estimate equals dot pred class right and we can see it's perfectly predicted everything we can also do it for our canon recipe canon one and we see that it perfectly predict both in this case um i'm actually going to just save the model and i'm going to just save the the boosted model so what we're going to do is fit the entire data set using the model the uh, final workflow. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say final boosted model using the fit and we'll give it the boosted workflow and our penguins data sets. And then I'm gonna save this model. So final boosted model to, I'll say penguin model dot RDS. Um, I'm actually gonna make sure I have my um, directory saved to the tidy Tuesday directory. Okay. Um, oops. And I'll save it. Cool. So now I'm going to save this one and I'll put this in the tidy Tuesday penguins. So tidy Tuesday penguins, penguin model. Great. So now I don't really need any of this stuff anymore. And now we're going to actually deploy this model using a shiny app. So I'll do a, what is it? Um, a shiny web app. Um, we're going to put this into our tidy Tuesday and I'm, what I'm going to call it is the tidy Tuesday penguin app. Uh, oops. Oh yeah. Oops. We'll open it that and we'll call it my bad tidy Tuesday penguin app. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go in tidy Tuesday, tidy Tuesday. I'm going to put the penguin model and tidy Tuesday thing into our actual app and we're good to go. So oh, actually I'm going to make sure, um, my directory is in the tight, the penguin app. Tidy Tuesday, uh, uh, where is Tidy Tuesday Penguin app? And I'll say set as working directory. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to load in the shiny dashboard, uh, tidy models and the tidy, uh, verse. Cool. We're going to do that. Actually, we'll, we'll do that right there. So we have that in what we're also going to do is we're going to load into our mo load in our model. So we'll say model is equal to read RDS penguin. Was it model dot RDS? So now we have our model. Additionally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and look up shiny, uh, shiny dashboard. Uh, oops. Okay. Let's do that get started and I'm just going to copy this stuff in. 
just so I don't have to retype it out and I run into any issues. Do that. Okay. Library. Shiny. Okay. So we're going to add a title first. So we're going to say uh, title equals penguin app. Okay. And on our sidebar, we need sidebar sidebar. We need to use a menu item and we're gonna call this menu item uh, penguin species because our model will predict the, uh, what penguin, the species it, what penguin species, the penguin belongs to. Sorry about that. We got to give it a tab. We'll get a penguin tab and the icon. We'll give it a, a snowflake icon. I believe they have one and let's just run it. So we're going to run it and we have a penguin species, nothing in here yet, but that's fine. Okay, cool. So that's what we have right there. Now what we're going to do is we're actually gonna add on to, um, a tab. So we're going to do that. So in our dashboard body, we're going to do a tab item cause this is going to be a single page, kind of a print of app. The tab name will be the, uh, penguin tab that we gave it. Now we're going to do is give it some boxes. So first what we're going to do is let's do all the inputs. And if we look at our model, um, we can also look at model pre, uh, was it mold and, uh, was our predictors. We can see we have all this stuff, right? So what we're going to do, um, we can actually do maybe like a, a view, right? We have our, we have all that stuff. So let's first start putting in to all of our values. And in fact, I'm just gonna do column names. Okay. So in this case, we're gonna do box. Uh, we're gonna do a select input first. And this input ID will be V, uh, let's say Island. Okay. Uh, our label will be Island cause I want to do all the categorical variables first. So we'll just do Island first and then our choices. Uh, our choices will be, um, was it dream Torgerson? And since it's a dummy variable, uh, we need to figure out which one it is. So I'm actually going to do, uh, let's see, what, what was it again? Um, let's see here. Penguins, oops, library dot penguin. Uh, just that. What, what was it called again? Let me go back. Um, penguins data set. What was it called? Where's the island? Oh, well, I'll just call it up. So Palmer, I'll do also call in the Palmer penguins. And we'll say penguins, uh, select Island, uh, distinct. Oh, oh, was it Bisco? So also, uh, Bisco. Cool. So that's our first one. And now we're going to do another one. In this case, we're going to do, was it V sex? So we'll say, uh, sex and it'll be, what is it? If we do a uh, sex male and female, um, I'll just do male, female. Cool. And then what we're going to do is a, uh, what is it? Slider input. And now we can do column names for that. Actually one, one thing we, what we should do is summary. So now we can actually kind of look at the, um, the, the kind of the range of, of numbers that they'll be, they'll be in. So we'll say, uh, V bill, oops, B, V bill length label equals bill length in millimeters. Our min will be 30, our max, oops our max will be is equal to, let's say 60 and our 
value will be the, let's just say the mean, mean which will be 45. Cool. Add a comment there, do that. Instead of bill length, it will be depth. And we'll say depth. And then what is it? Min is 13, so we'll say 10. Our max is 21, we'll say 25. And our value will be 17. Cool. We'll do another one. In this case, it'll be flipper length. So flipper length, flipper length. Our min will be say 170. Our max will be say uh, 235. And our value will be 200. Lastly, lastly, we'll do our body mass. So body mass, and this will be body mass in grams. Our min is 2,700. We'll say that. Our max is 6,300. And our value that we'll be choosing is uh, 4,000. Cool. So let's run this app to see if it works right now. Okay, and we have all of that. It's working pretty well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna capitalize some of these things. So Sexton Island. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add in a value box. Okay. So box, uh, value box out, output. And we'll say penguin prediction. Okay. And this is where we're actually going to apply this prediction. Okay. So we'll say, uh, was it output dash penguin prediction render value box? Okay. So we already have our model and we have our inputs. What we're going to do is we're going to create a tibble. So our tibble will be our island, which will be equal to input v island, I think we'll have a bill length in millimeters, uh, which will be equal to input V bill length. We'll have a bill depth in millimeters, which will be input V bill depth. We'll do a flipper length, which will be input V flipper length. And then we'll have a uh, was it body mass G? I'm going to do that. Body mass. And that'll be equal to input V body mass. Let's see if we look at our summary. Body mass G. Yes. All that makes sense. And then we'll do our sex sex, which is equal to input V sex. So we have our, our table and then we'll do a predict and we'll give it our model and the table that we created. Cool. Okay. So this is our prediction and this will just give us the output that we want from it. Okay, so this will be a, a prediction. Cool. And now additionally, what I think is will be important is we'll do the prediction prob. In this case, we're just going to use the same function. However, um, after the, the tibble that we made, we'll say, uh, was it uh, type equals prob, right? And we'll just do... Um, and if we actually do look at this, um, we can do, what is it? Uh, we, we can kind of just say, uh, a get, we, we can do a, uh, what is it? We can kind of look at what it's doing. So let's do that. And we'll just say, what is it? Input is, uh, Fisco. Mail and we'll just do. Uh, I'm gonna basically 
actually enter in some number, numbers. So I'll do 20, 20, 20, 20, and we'll say type equals prob. So what does it do? It actually gives out our probabilities. So what I think we should do is gather it and then arrange by uh, descending value and then slice one, select uh, value. All right, so that way we have the value. So that's what we're gonna do into this little chain function right here. Cool. And that'll be our prediction probability. Um, additionally, I think it would be cool to change the color. So I'll say prediction color and we'll just do if else. So if else our prediction and if we actually do the, uh, let me go back here, we remove type equals prob. It actually just gives us our dot pred class. So we'll do that dot pred class. And we'll say it equals, um, what is it? Penguins select species distinct. Okay. So if we have, if our class is equal to Adelie, we'll say a uh, blue else, um, if else prediction dot pred class equals gen two, then red else is yellow. So just a nested if statement um, for our prediction color. Now, finally, we're going to do our value value box, which is that our value will be equal to uh, our pace. So we'll say pace zero. In this case, I want to give it a percentage. So we'll, we'll give it the prediction prob. Um, and we know it's value. So we'll say 100 times the prediction value. And we'll also round the round it to a zero decimal places and give it a percent. Then we'll do a subtitle. We'll say paste zero per species, uh, species, and we'll give it our, was it prediction, uh, prediction dot pred class, All right? Dot pred class value. And then we'll do lastly our Actually, we'll do a color equals prediction color and our icon will be icon and we'll say snowflake just for the same thing. So let's see if it actually runs and we'll do some tweaking after prediction, not found. I spelled prediction wrong. Pre prediction. Okay. Let's see if that runs prediction. Prediction. Predict. Oh, there. Prediction. There we go. So now we can change this. So we have Torgerson. See how it changes to species. Gentoo, Italy. We change the island chin strap. We also change this thing. Cool. So you can see how it was actually pretty simple to make this app. I know this is a pretty bare bones app, uh, and you could definitely do a better UI, but for me, when I'm doing deploying for models, I definitely prefer to put it in a shiny web app over creating a RESTful API. I know this thing, this tight Tuesday was pretty fast, um, especially with the, the web app, but I was basically just making, um, basic filters and use those inputs into our model. And since our model is just a XG boost model, it predicts pretty fast and can do it in real time. And I'm sure you guys can build some cool models and put, do it and apply it to your own projects. So I'm gonna end this video and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next week and tidy on.